That's what I remember. Smack and knuckle on bone, my eyes stinging and him stood there spitting and snarling, his mates laughing. The air between us crackles with aggression. You see the violence in his eyes that I hate. You know he's daring you to answer back so he can batter you. You can't move. Your mind's gone blank. He tells you not to do it again. You haven't said a word or done a thing and... Your whole body's shaking. You don't say a word to the ball gone and everything you wanted to say comes out. What do you do that for? You're standing there bullying me because you think it's funny. Stood there with your mates watching. Don't you impress them, eh? Punching someone who doesn't want to fight. Wasn't even looking at you. Sitting there in class every day, shouting your mouth off. Because you know I went out the back. These words inspire you to speak up to fight back, but it's too late. He's already walked off thinking he's won. You think about going after them, putting a stop to it. You're sick of it happening every day. Instead, you end up sitting at home, replaying it over and over in your mind, wondering why when it happens, you just freeze. You can't think what to say back up. Any words you do say come out wrong. Some days were really bad. It was like everyone wanted to bully me. And everyone watching has a, has a different reaction. Some of them just stand there and watch or... Film it on their phone. Some of them laugh. They think it's funny. Some of them encourage it. Say it again. Do it again. Go on, knock him out! Then you get the ones who see it happen and you know what they're thinking. God, that's terrible. Just glad that's not me. I used to ask myself a question. Why me? I wasn't the type of kid you'd think would get bullied. I was popular at school. I was captain of the football team. I had loads of mates. Then everything changed. I had to go to this new school where I didn't know anyone. And I walk in the classroom on my first day and everyone turns and stares at me. And he looks at me, the new kid, decides to insult me as soon as I sit down. So that's it then. He's deciding. Unless I answer him straight back, but... First time it happens, and I'm not expecting it. It takes me by surprise. I just, I just sit there and look at the desk. I had to work so hard at the new school to get accepted. I had to, I had to win a place in the football team. I didn't mind proving myself. I, I loved football. But before and after, every game, in class, in the corridor, on the bus, in the change rooms, they just never shut up. You doing here? Shouldn't be at this school. Shouldn't be in a team. Rubbish, mate. You're rubbish. Nothing I did was good enough. Even if I played really well. Remember the cup semi-final? The whole school's watching. I took it past one, past two. Bang! Right foot straight in the top corner. Everyone on the touchline's going mad. We've won. We're in the final. Except him in the change rooms after the game. You think scoring that goal makes you good? That was lucky, he didn't mean to do it. You're still rubbish. So you get this group of them who start following you around school, doing things to wind you up, like punching the back of your chair, pushing you out of the way, or constantly, relentlessly saying things, trying to wind you up. <laughs> nice coat, mate, where'd you get that? <laughs> Nice trainers, mate. Your mum, mate! Your mum! <laughs> I played rugby at school. I was really good. I, I used to dream about playing professionally, playing for England. One day I told them that was what I was going to do. I was just trying to make them shut up. It made things worse. Next time I walked in the change rooms and put my bag down, one of them picked it up and threw it. Don't sit near me. Move! You try to cope with it on your own. and I did for quite a while, but the longer it goes on, the more it starts to affect you. You, you start to change. I withdrew into myself. I stopped trying to answer back. I stopped hanging around my mates. In the end, I stopped playing rugby. I gave up. My favourite sport. Who cares? It's a stupid game. And I'll never forget the last time I played rugby. It was in PE at school. Someone took the ball, smashed it into the air. And as it's coming down, they're all shouting at me, catch it! The 
first time in my life, I didn't even try. I took a step back. I've never done that before. It was so weird, it was just like, I don't care, I don't want to play. I just want it to stop. I thought it would stop if I quit the team, so I quit the team. It didn't stop. You have to find some escape. I found it in visualisation. I'd go home at the end of the day, sit in my room and imagine situ situations I've been in. I'd see it in my head like a film. Only this time, the film's got a different ending. I'm sitting there in class. None of my mates are in this lesson. The teacher's five minutes late and this idiot sees me sat there, sees everyone watching. Oi! Oi! Shut the door. Now! Or knock you out. You knock me out, are you, mate? Go on, then. Go on! Yes! Just leave me alone! Leave me alone! And I watch him hit the floor with a smack, his nose smashed all over his face. I watch him back again and again and again. Bed. There's adrenaline thumping around my body like mad. I'm so full of energy, I feel, I feel sick. I was so angry at myself for letting them do it. But once it starts happening very quickly, it becomes normal. It's not that easy to stop. And the kids who do it, they're so good at making you feel powerless. Like there's nothing you can say or do. And they weren't my first bullies. I was at primary school when it started, in year six. I used to go home with bruises, ripped clothes, broken glasses, worried about going back again the next day. I remember being dropped off for school by my dad and seeing this kid in the playground and knowing he was waiting for me. I tried everything I could think of to make it stop. I tried making them laugh. I tried messing about, getting myself into trouble. I thought that might impress them. In the end, out of sheer desperation, I even asked if I could join their stupid gang. You know the usual people who follow bullies like sheep, who laugh at everything they say, who can't seem to think or act for themselves. One lunchtime I was surrounded, I couldn't move, I just started shouting, let go of me! And as soon as I raised my voice, they scattered, they ran off. And it felt good, because I'd made it stop. And then I got to secondary school. I think about the teachers at my school and I wonder if they knew what was going on. Then I remember the time I was just stood there waiting for the bus and this kid kept walking up and saying stuff. You know the kind of things people say. And I kept ignoring him, I kept walking away, he just wouldn't leave it alone. And this teacher stood there, there watching, waiting to see what I was going to do. What did he want me to do? Smack him one, say something really funny back. Did he not know what to do? Did he not care? Did he look at me and think, he's got to learn to fight his own battles? Did he look at me and think, he deserves to get bullied, he's a wimp? I can't stand that word. I wasn't a wimp. I was a frightened kid struggling with a problem I had no answer to. There's no such thing as a wimp. All I needed was help, support, guidance. And Do you know how quickly I would have stopped that happening to me? Pointless him standing there waiting for me because I was waiting for him. All these kids who bully, they don't understand or care about the effect they have on people. They think it's just banter or just a laugh and we make excuses for them so they get away with it like um, uh, he had problems at home. He had problems at school. It wasn't his fault. Whose fault is it then? It makes you wonder, what's wrong with people? Friendly banter is all right with your friends, but when it's all one way, directed at that one person you don't like and you mean to make them feel bad, and you get a buzz from doing it, so you say it and do it and text it and post it again and again and again. Why do people do that? Or do they feel they're getting out of it? 
we have this stereotype that bullies are thick. They're not very clever, but they are, because they know how to get away with it, how to manipulate people, how to play the game and bullying. It is just a game. Playing that game when I was growing up changed me to someone I don't recognise now. I lost all my confidence. I became so introverted, so shy, I found it hard to speak to people. I was so full of anger sometimes. I didn't know how to control it. I used to try and avoid it. I'd go home every lunch and have half an hour of peace and quiet. But you can't escape it. The more you run away, the more it follows you. It's that feeling when you wake up in the morning. You go into school and you're thinking, is it going to happen again today? It's that feeling when you get home and you switch on your laptop. You're thinking, is it going to happen again? There's no escape. I suppose that's why I didn't tell anyone. I felt weak. I felt, I felt ashamed about it. I felt like maybe in some way it was my fault. I didn't tell anyone. Until one day something happened at school. And this kid had been winding me up in every lesson all morning. As he pushed past me at break, he went, Get out of the way, mate! <laughs> Spat right at me, right in my face. I just smacked him. He pushed me back. Yeah, yeah, are you starting? <laughs> yes, mate. That would be why I punched you in the face. Eventually, I did find a way of properly making it stop. But some people never do. It's like they never leave school because bully or victim is what they've learned to be. And he's still out there now. He's still the same person. And now it's his girlfriend he takes it out on. Or his kids. Or someone at work he doesn't like. Or someone in a pub he doesn't even know. And I see people like that every day. And I know inside they're not happy in themselves. But they could be. Because you don't have to be like that. Bullying taught me so much about people, about life, about myself. We all have that impulse sometimes to say and do things we know aren't right. We all have to manage difficult emotions, anger, frustration, fear. These emotions are just energy. If you take that energy and channel it in a positive way, you create an amazing life for yourself where you're happy with who you are. And there's nobody bullying you. this photograph of me at home in my school uniform, my blazer and tie. I look at that photo now. I don't recognise that person. I can't believe I let that happen to me. And I'm not blaming them. I did let it happen. I could have made a different choice. I just didn't know what to do. And the truth is he never had any power over me. Bullies haven't got any power. Only the power you give them when you don't speak up, when you stay quiet. And what stops you speaking up is that feeling of fear inside that you'll make things worse. But if you're going through something like that, it can't get any worse. It can't. You have to be brave. You have to find the courage in yourself to speak out, 